way, are you under the impression that sunsets don't work on a flat earth because the angular size of the sun should change drastically as it moves away from us? <laughs> well, this video's for you. Awesome, finally some clarity on the flat earth model actually representing reality. That is what this is, right? So, I recently had this guy come up on my For You page. Now, I am aware that others have covered this guy, but I wanted to give him a chance. You know, see what he has to say. Especially when he's gone out of his way to make a video just for people like you and me. We're not only going to go over how the sun's size does actually change with a solar filter, but we're going to use an analogy to show that they should change slowly and not rapidly, like a lot of the GLOBE proponents suggest. No, we don't suggest that. That's the result of taking flat earth claims to its conclusion. If flat earthers make a crazy claim that the earth is flat, and they don't like the results because it doesn't match what we see, you can't just straw man the argument to win. It's not about winning. We don't just think that it should be visibly smaller in size, but it should shrink into smaller and smaller sizes until it disappears. Or we shouldn't experience nighttime, because the sun could be visible at all times. Or, again, the sun does set and does go under the earth, making a strange geocentric flat earth model. But that would require a new model that we've never seen before, where either the sun is outside of the dome, or the dome encompasses more than just the earth, and the earth floats in the middle of the dome somehow, with the dome being some sort of sphere. Hmm, <laughs> ironically. I'll simply use my hand to demonstrate this. If I put my hand right up in front of this camera, you see how it's really big? and then you move it away and the angular size changes very quickly, that's a demonstration of things changing rapidly because they're close to you. If something like the sun is already at a great distance away from you- I'm guessing your version of great distance here isn't the same as mine, as the sun is 93 million miles away from us. Its angular size is going to change very slowly. Hence, if I was already a mile away from you, I put up my the same hand and I started moving towards or away from you, it would change slowly. <laughs> this is why the sun's size does not change drastically. The sun doesn't need to change drastically, but it could change slowly for you. The real question is, does it shrink to a tiny point and fade out of sight, or does it go below the ground so that you can see, like the curvature of the earth getting in the way? It leaves our view of perspective before it can change size extremely. Are you waiting for me to show you the actual size of the sun changing, even with a solar filter? <laughs> Check out this video and we'll talk about it after. It surprises me that you even know what a solar filter is, considering you couldn't even edit the video to display your oh-so-funny tinfoil hat joke. There, I fixed it for you. But let's have a look at this video then, and we most certainly will talk about it after. <laughs> There's a few of them you find, and one of them is from a channel that's actually trying to prove that the sun doesn't change sizes. And they share their footage, they don't do any comparison of the before and the after, they just share the footage, and when you watch it, it looks like there isn't a very big size change, but if you take screenshots and zoom way in and compare these, you can tell pretty instantly that there's a significant change in size. Isn't that hilarious? Some Glober actually did all the work for us, showing that the angular size of the sun does change even with a solar filter. Oh no, that's not what happened. Some other flat earther did your cherry picking for you. That's what happened here. Now, I can't find that original Globe Earthers video, so I can only work with what I got, which, at the very least, shows that flat earthers jump for joy when receiving any positivity about their beliefs, that then suddenly lack any critical thinking that they love to claim to have. Do you see how on one side, the sun is very bright and the other, it's very dim? Well, this isn't because it's further away and getting smaller. It's like the sun strangely went wispy like a cloud. Is this some other flat earth magic or do you think a cloud got in the way? Now, I don't know for sure. I didn't take the pictures and I couldn't find the video. But it shouldn't be hard if we live on a flat earth to video the sun moving away from us and dimming out into non-visibility. It's strange that we don't have that, isn't it? But don't worry, I think he gives it a go later. You can see here, here's another demonstration. Solar filter was used. Size changes over the course of a day. And the color changes again as well. Those solar filters are revolutionary. We have proof, finally, that our sun is rainbow colored, floaty sky fire. Whoa, <laughs> uh, sorry, I think he nearly got to me there. 
I'd like to quickly and swiftly destroy the ideology that the sun shouldn't set now, because I know the opposition's going to be crying about it in the chat now that I've destroyed that it does change angular size. Oh my god, he's so smug, isn't he? <laughs> does he actually think this is revolutionary? It's like me saying all ladybugs are red with black dots. There are no other types out there because I have a photo of one right here, proving that I'm right. No, no, what's that? That, that's just CGI. It's not real. Don't look at those. those are, it's a conspiracy. They're trying to stop the word getting to you because I'm special. The sun, as it or the moon, as they get further away from you, they lower in perspective. Now he brings up a very valid point here. Oh, not the <laughs> oh, not the perspective stuff. But obviously, the moon has to follow the same rules. So why are the flat earthers only using the sun as evidence? Is it because the sun is very bright and needs a solar filter? And it can then be cherry-picked from? Maybe? Addressing a statement from lowering in perspective, now imagine that road had cat eyes on it, you know, the little light bits or reflective panels. As those things are moving away from you, they would be rising in perspective. Meaning that as the sun got to that vanishing point, it would, you know, start to vanish by shrinking in size. This graphic very easily demonstrates this. So the sun's elevation relative to us stays similar, but because we have a terrestrial view of a celestial object, it lowers in our perspective, due to point perspective. So what you're saying here is that if the Earth was flat, it would still closely resemble the globe Earth based on reality. Now, if I was to draw perspective lines here so that you can see the sun as it moves away from us, you would need to change the size to the point we can't see. To demonstrate, I'll use the same graph you did. If I put if I put a sun if I put a sun all the way over here, it's still visible, but on the globe side, it doesn't change size much, if at all, noticeably, before going out of sight. So one clearly resembles reality much better than the other. Now, you may ask, what is point perspective, Caleb? We don't see in Euclidean geometry in completely straight lines. We see in hyperbolic geometry. Hence, the ground ramps up and the sky ramps down, creating a vanishing point. So again, as the sun gets further away from us over the course of a day... It doesn't vanish, does it? So it's not perspective that's the problem, is it? It lowers in perspective and disappears from the bottom up, similar to this coin on a table. As you move it away from an observer, everything disappears from bottom up. It's not exclusive to a globe earth model. This is so stupid it's unbelievable. Let me open up Blender. Hello, so welcome to Blender. I've set up a nice little scene here as you can see. So we've got the sun and we have an ocean. Now, just to be clear, it is a 3D model. It's just a little representation of the table experiment. So here's our sun. We're going to push this backwards into the background and see if it actually goes away from this view. Now let's have a look. We're in orthographic view, which means it's going to, like everything coming towards the camera is appearing in straight lines, almost like a 2D surface. So we'll change that to perspective mode. So now we can see that the lines are no longer all straight. You can just about see the grid here. If I take away the cube's vision, even though it's not a cube, you can see that the grids are now in perspective mode. Switch back to orthographic. Suddenly it changes to a 2D perspective, basically. And then we've got that. So let's turn our ocean back on and select our sphere, our sun, if you like. So if we're going to push this into the background, got to remember how to do this now. I can move it freely, but I'm not going to move it freely. I'm going to lock it on the Y axis, which is from us and away from us or to us and away from us. Once we've done that, we can now push the sun further and further away. As you can see, it's still visible and it's drastically changed its size. Let's see how far away it takes on this. Obviously this number isn't really going to work in real life because number one, the earth isn't flat. And number two, because I haven't created a planet here, I've just created the table experiment. So if we move the sphere back by five, nope, on the Y axis by 200, there we go. You can see it's a small dot now, but let's move it back 300. 300, there we go, sorry. And then we can still see it. 
let's move it back 400 it's still there let's go 700 that's 7000 700 it's a tiny dot now but you can still see it now i know what caleb's going to say here let's move the ball down onto the surface the sun is not on the earth's surface but let's just move it down by two no minus three there we go as you can see we've got like a butt print on the surface here now let's take the sun g to move it and then press y to lock it on the y-axis and as you can see it goes very very close to the surface here in fact let's just have a look how close and i think you can't really get much closer than this so let's put it back onto that view. Now we've got to take it off all graphic mode. Now we're in the exact same view as we were before. Okay, it's in perspective mode. Now if I press G, lock it on the Y axis and do the same thing. Let's go back 200. Oh, look at that. It moves away from us from both directions because it shrinks in size perspectively. Both the top is moving down and the bottom is moving up. Now if the sun is obviously in the sky, it is going to slowly move downward, but there's never going to be a point where it reaches under our perspective view. Now, let's just confirm this by moving it even further back. Let's go 400. No, nope, we can still see it. 600. We can still see it. Now, let me know if I can improve this in a way that matches flat Earth and a way that matches reality. Thank you. Now you may ask me, Caleb, why does the sun even go around our level plane? And I have to reply with, I have no idea. This is the most honest answer I think you can give for anything you've said in this video. I cannot use the scientific method to demonstrate how the sun is being propulsed around our level plane. <laughs> okay, okay, this is maybe a step in the right direction. The answer is that it can't be explained this way because it's not true. This is an indication that your idea is wrong and that it needs addressing in a different manner. So maybe we should look at things that can be explained, like the Earth going around the Sun, not the other way around. Just like everything else in the solar system, because it's based on gravity caused by mass, and if Earth is like everything else going around the Sun, maybe, just maybe, we've ruled out a disk-like object. But if you map all of the wandering stars, or planets as they call them today, over an azimuthal projection, you'll get these geometric lines that seem to be following these ley lines on a magnetic field under a supercell. So maybe everything's magnetically propulsed by the perturbation that is coming from the North Pole. Just a guess. Oh my fucking Christ. I thought we were getting somewhere. If it's all being moved by our magnetic field around the Earth, why are planets affected at all? Why aren't stars? Because they're further away, or because the sky is just a projected screen? That sounds silly, but you never know with flat earthers. Shouldn't it be just the sun and the moon? Because they're so close. Despite you saying earlier that the sun was at a great distance away from you, because of perspective, remember? But now it's suddenly so close it's affected by our magnetic sphere. What about Jupiter? Its magnetosphere is the largest of all in our solar system. Shouldn't we be going around Jupiter? And if not, why not? Just a reminder to the Globers. All celestial elevation angles require a flat Earth assumption. Uh, not really. It's more about three points of location. The curvature of the Earth isn't really required here. It's just not relevant. Point one is you, point two is the horizon, and point three is the object, which does create a triangle with flat edges. But I'll say again to clarify, you don't need to work out the curvature of the Earth for that. The sun, over the course of a year, lowers and hires dependent on what season we're in and gets closer and farther away from the center of the Earth, causing temperature differentials over the course of a year being warmer and colder. That also doesn't work with reality. Remember on the flat Earth, a day means that everywhere on Earth sees the sun. As the sun goes round, everywhere will have experienced the sun. So if summer is in Europe, which is in the northern hemisphere, then it would also be summer in Australia, but that's not what happens. In reality, it's the opposite in the southern hemisphere. 
So this wouldn't work if the sun is simply going up and down to create summer and winter to create the seasons. Unless you're saying the sun bobs up and down each day as well. You know, specific for the locations that we see. And speeds up and slows down to have the same time pass for each day over longer and shorter distances. And let me guess, that all happens because of magnetic fields again. Or... Are you an Australia denier as well? I am actually interested in what his answer would be because I can't make any sense of his logic. Also, the sun does not look like this ever when we look at it. If you look at the sun with a solar filter, it actually looks like this. Just to warn everybody. Warn everyone about what? How does this affect anyone negatively if he's correct? Which he isn't, because for some reason he thinks all photos should be the same no matter what scope you use or filters you have or range of light you're looking at. I think that's pretty much all I have to say. The Earth, it's a level topographical plane. Enjoy your day. Yeah, you should have left it there. It's not a topographical plane. Even the evidence in this video suggests a globe Earth. You just have to think really, really how well at all actually. That would help. Thanks for watching and let me know what I could do better in my videos or if you have anything else to add. But other than that, there are two videos on screen right now. Feel free to click on one and I'll see you there.